It's amazing that last week I was on the beaches of Mexico. There's a palm tree covered in snow. So this is a little breath of winter wonderland here for your daily devotional today. I thought I'd give you a little glimpse into my yard here. And you can see this <laughs> car is covered in snow, people skidding along. But anyway, I hope you're having a good day. I'm going to go back inside and record the rest of it. See you in a minute. I hope you enjoyed that little blast of snow from outside, and it is cold here on December the 27th, winter in Canada, minus 7, which is about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, you know, as I said, I was in Mexico preaching the gospel, now we're here, back in Canada, so five days left in the year, this is your daily devotional, your thought for the day. So again, if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. Click a like, share this with a friend. Let's get going. Luke 17, 21. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, and they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. For those of you reading the Bible in a year, today you're reading Zechariah 1 to 4, Revelation chapter 18. Here's your thoughts for the day. Always do right. This is going to surprise some people, and it's going to astonish the rest. The older you get, the better you realize you used to be. Great things are not done by impulse, but by a series of small things brought together. Here's your motivation for the day. God does not make the other person as I would have made him. He did not give me him as a brother for me to dominate and to control, but in order that I might find a way for both of us to overcome. History in 1904 was the premiere of the play Peter Pan. 2004, radiation from an explosion of a Magnus star, and that's a neutron star which has a very high magnetic field, reaches the Earth. It's the brightest extrasolar event known to have been witnessed on the planet. 2012, NASA unveils a plan, and you know what they're going to do? They're going to go capture a 500-ton asteroid in around 2025. We'll see how that works out. Here's your personal story for today. Avoid bitterness. Great emphasis is being placed on living longer and better. Advances in medical science are making it possible for more and more people. Yet, in spite of this, none of us can avoid growing old. One day, aging is going to overtake us and our bodies will shut down. What is preventable, however, is an attitude of bitterness and regrets as we grow older. Look at the life of Moses. He was 120 years old and he stood with the Israelites before they crossed the Jordan River on their way to the Promised Land. He could not go with them because he disobeyed the Lord when he, in anger, struck the rock in the wilderness. Read that in Numbers 20. How easily Moses could have slipped into a self-pity, resentful frame of mind. He asked God a few times and pleaded his case, but God said, no, no, don't worry, there's a plan and enough of this matter. Now, he had not borne the burden of a stubborn and stiff-necked people for 40 years. And, you know, walking around in the desert with all the whining and complaining, he could have easily succumbed to that as well. Had he not interceded for them time after time, no, that's true. Yet at the end of his life, he praised the Lord and urged a new generation of Israelites to obey him. Deuteronomy 32, 1 to 4 and 45 to 47 are good verses to read. As we grow older, we can dwell on the failures and hardships of our past, and we can remember God's faithfulness and accept his discipline and keep looking forward to the future with faith. Now, that seems like a better path, doesn't it? One filled with joy and happiness. It's the only way to avoid a bitter attitude. Focus on what you have in blessings and what's waiting for you on that wonderful day when the Lord returns. Here's your devotional thoughts for the day. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils in the breath of life. And man became a living soul. References from Genesis chapter 2. Now, you've heard of DNA. 
It's composed of strings of molecules that are distinguished by four nitrogen-containing bases. And for the sake of this, they call them A, G, T, and C for short. You can take a look at this. I worked uh, in a scientific lab, and they gave me DNA sequencing to to sort of take a look at it. And all it is is just letter after letter after letter, uh, you know, which is shorthand for what the molecules are doing. One musical composer, he took the DNA sequences and decided to put it into music by matching the tones from an eight-note scale with the four letters and then composing melodies to accompany the musical codes for specific genes. He and a team from Madrid Hospital, you know, they recently released an entire album, Genoma Music. Well, that sounds fun, doesn't it? I guess there's Gregorian chants as well, so maybe we'll go with the Genoma Music. How about that? And it featured instrumental pieces based on this idea. They called their project an audio version of the Blueprint for Life. Now, the author and of the Blueprint is God, and he rejoiced in the high note of his creation, humanity. He was personally involved in fashioning Adam and Eve. He breathed the very breath of life into them. Four central truths emerge in this story, all of which help us on our quest for purpose. First, were created in his own image in Genesis 1, 26 to 27. Suggestions about what this image consists of includes our intellect or reason, our moral capabilities, or will or ability to make choices. Maybe it's our creativity, our souls. Maybe it's the spiritual dimension. Being made in God's image implies the worth and dignity of every person. Second, We've been given the authority over the created world. Again, Genesis 1, 26 to 30. This is actual stewardship under God's authority, delegated by him to be used in the right ways. Our rulership is not dictator or despot thing or rape and pillage and destroy the land, but rather it means that we are to care for our world and seek optimal conditions for the life in it. Third, we need to work for the rest that has been built into the very core of our beings. God himself modeled this for us by working six days and resting on the seventh. Early on, he gave Adam work to do as well, to care for the Garden of Eden. Man's first special assignment was to name the animals, and was both he was both practical and creative. Fourth, in our relationship with God, we are called to obedience. Right from the start, God gave Adam and Eve a law to follow, the command not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. All right, the final thought today is God's patience. Genesis 15, 15 to 16. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. For the most part, people are very impatient. The moment the stoplight turns green and a driver behind them, toot toot on the horn. Now, I've had that happen. I've probably been guilty of doing that once or twice myself. Now, you can just see the frustration and impatient faces of those caught in the long line uh, on a, uh, a Boxing Day sale, which we talked about yesterday, or Black Friday sale, or even at the supermarket registry. Fortunately, God demonstrates a great deal of more restraint than we do. When God revealed to Abraham some things yet to come, he advised him that his descendants would not return to the land for four generations because of the iniquity of the Amorites was not yet complete. Even though these people were pagans and God continued to demonstrate patience towards them, with Abraham dwelling in their midst in Genesis 13, there was always the possibility that individuals, if not the nation as a whole, might turn to the God of Abraham. While man might have brought swift judgment, God graciously gave these people 400 years to turn from their idolatry and human sacrifice. Remember, they were banging on the drums as the mothers brought their infant babies up to be sacrificed and burnt alive. Now, the Apostle Peter spoke of the same graciousness. He reminded his readers 
The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering or patient towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we got to remember that when we look around the world today. It's easy to get frustrated about some of the things that we see happening. But God's patience is always there, hoping that, you know, they will come to the Lord. Maybe there is time for repentance, or maybe it will just sort of go its course till it gets to the final point when the Lord has to come back and intervene. Satan loves to convince us that God's patience with us has come to an end. He tries to persuade us that we have sinned maybe just one too many times, and God has washed his hands of us like Pilate there washing his hands of the blood of Jesus. But we must reject this lie. Well, we must not abuse God's patience. He stands ready to forgive and receive us back when we repent. Be confident that you can never deplete the patience of God. If your heart is pure and your repentance sincere, the perseverance of man cannot exhaust the patience of God. Some good learning today, some fun facts. In England in the 1880s, pants was considered a dirty word. And did you know more money is spent on gardening than any other hobby? Well, no gardening today. It's all covered in snow, but in a month or two, it'll start to melt. Here's your closing thought. Lord, today I will set aside petty grievances and look for solutions. All right, I, I know I've been lacking in the jokes, so I'll give you an old one for a good chuckle. And this is a, an epitaph on a cemetery in England. Remember, man, as you walk by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so shall you be. Remember this and follow me. And now somebody wrote something on the tombstone just to have a bit of a chuckle. To follow you, I'll not consent until I know which way you went. Now let's hope that eventually when the Lord returns, we all go up. And finally, did you know that cats, uh, why they were created and we talked about the Garden of Eden and God creating all things and Adam naming them. Now, cats are intended to teach us that not everything in nature has a function. All right, all you cat lovers, don't make any comments about that. Thanks all for coming. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.